Hi friends, welcome back to another Disney tutorial. Today we are gonna be making these really cute Disney character scenes. And so we're gonna have a couple different scenes that you guys can make. Today I am making Beauty and the Beast. So stay tuned to see how we make it. So to get started, we are gonna need a couple supplies. So we are going to need watercolors, crayons, scissors, a glue stick or Elmer's glue or Mod Podge and some paper. So here I have a watercolor paper because I'm choosing to do a watercolor as my background, but I am also going to include some backgrounds that can just be printed off of the computer if you'd rather have more of an authentic background to match your characters. But for me, since I'm using watercolors, I am using the thicker watercolor paper. But if you don't have watercolor paper, that is okay. You can also just use white printer paper your printed out Disney characters of your choice. So there are gonna be a few options in the Disney classroom. So today I am choosing to do Beauty and the Beast, um, but there will be a few different movie characters that you can choose. And for me, since I'm doing watercolors, I need a cup of water and a paintbrush. So this project is kind of similar to the silhouette project that we did a couple weeks ago. The only difference is this one I am showing as having colored characters. So versus the, the black silhouette. So this just adds an extra dimension of color and kind of adds a nice fun twist to this project. But it's also really cool because even if you've done a project similar to this before, you could choose different characters to do. Um, I'm also going to need my piece of paper to get started. So as I mentioned, I said that I'm going to be using my watercolors to make my background. Um, I have also added on our Google Classroom backgrounds that match all of the characters that I have put up. So if you wanted to just print more of an authentic background instead of making your own, you can totally do that. I just wanted to add an extra option um, just because I know printing out those backgrounds could use a lot of ink. And so what I am doing is I am using my watercolor paper and I'm going to be watercoloring a background for my Beauty and the Beast character. I'm actually going to be adding a few clips of our backgrounds so you can see kind of some inspiration if you don't want to print out the background of kind of the colors that are in the backgrounds that I chose. So I'm going to insert those now. Okay, so for me, since I'm doing Beauty and the Beast, the background that showed for Beauty and the Beast um, had a lot of like orangey colors and then in the background there was some pillars and then there was also um, through the window there was kind of the starry night and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go off of that theme this is totally optional you don't have to copy the backgrounds that I added I'm just putting them up there for you to have some inspiration if you don't know the direction that you want to go in but depending on what type of background you are using whether you're using the printout background that are on the Google Classroom whether you're painting your own or drawing your own this is the next step to our project is to actually create or print and get those backgrounds ready to go. So depending on what route you're taking, that is the next step to the project. Since I know my characters and I know kind of an inspiration of a background, I'm just gonna get my paints open. If you have already printed out your background to add your characters to, you can just skip this part of the video and pick up when we move on to the next step. And then I'm just gonna start to create my background. Oh, one extra thing I wanted to add, if you are using watercolors like me, like you've probably seen in my other videos, I love the look of crayon and how it kind of pops through um, watercolor. So if you wanted to add, um, use like a white crayon and add some designs before you watercolor, totally great. You, This would be a great time to do that. <laughs>
Okay, you guys, so my background is completed. Since I did use watercolors, it is a little bit wet right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to set this aside while I cut out my characters. Okay, so now that we are ready to get our characters ready, I printed out characters from the Google Classroom, so mine are just kind of ready to go. If printer ink is an issue, what you could do is you could also look for characters on Google that are more of like coloring sheets and you could print those out, color them with pencil, color pencils or crayons, and then cut them out and add them to your background. If you do have access to a printer and you want to just print the characters that is probably the easiest but both ways will work great so what i'm going to do next is i am going to just start cutting out each character Okay, you guys, so I have all of the characters cut out and ready to go. Normally what I would say is these scraps I will put away and recycle them, um, but we are actually going to need some scrap paper. So I'm gonna take just this big piece and keep this out. But all these tiny scraps I'm going to just collect and I will recycle these. Okay, so the next part of this is kind of optional, but it adds a really fun extra dimension to your project. So what you could do, and this is totally fine and your project will look great even if you do this, you could at this point just take your character, take your glue, and add glue onto the back and glue them directly onto your background. That would be great. I am going to add one extra little dimension which may be kind of fun. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my scrap paper and I'm just gonna cut a little strip. So I'm just gonna cut straight this um, it can look something like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. This part isn't actually going to be seen on our project, but basically what we are going to be doing is we're going to be taking this piece of paper and we're going to be kind of accordion folding it. So I'll show you what I mean. So here's just this little strip of paper. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to just fold it. So that will be the first fold. And then I'm going to fold it backwards and then forwards. So it kind of looks like an accordion, if you guys can see that. And I'm just going to keep doing that throughout the entire strip that I have here. And so then when it's done, it's going to look something like this. So you can kind of stretch it out, make it long, or you can push it down to make it a little bit shorter. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating, so this is, like I said, this is totally optional. It's just kind of fun. Um, so what I'm going to be doing, taking these and I'm going to be taking my character and I'm going to be gluing these onto the back. Um, so I would recommend gluing them right in the middle, right in the middle of your character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my glue. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the very end of this little accordion that we made. And then I'm going to be sticking it onto the back of my character. Once you know that it's on there really good and it's not going to come off, um, you can see it kind of looks like this. So it's glued onto the character. 
And so now what we can do is when our paper is ready, I will be gluing these down. And so they'll kind of pop up off of the sheet, which will add an extra like 3D dimension, which is really cool. So since my paper is not quite dry yet, I'm just going to be adding these onto the back of all of my characters first, and then I will be gluing them down all at once. So I'm just going to do the same thing with all of these. I'm going to just cut strips of paper, accordion fold them, put glue on one side and stick it down to the character, and then move on to the next one. Cogsworth. This was actually one image when I found it. They were they were connected. As you can see, they are pretty close together. Um, you could cut them to make two different characters and put them in two separate spots on your background. For me, I'm just going to keep them together because I know in the movie they're kind of like a duo and they're usually found together. I'm just going to keep it as one. So now I have all of my characters cut out. I have the little springs on the back. And so now I'm gonna do just a little bit of cleanup before I start to glue down my characters on my piece of paper. So I'm going to just put away our scissors. We don't need these anymore. And our scraps of paper, we don't need any more of these. So the rest that you did not use to make your little springs on the back can go in recycle. We will still need our glue stick though to add our characters to our background. And that is what we are going to do next. Okay, so I've got my background here and I have my glue and I have all of my characters ready to go. The next step is to kind of decide where you want your characters to be before you glue them down. So I'm just going to kind of place them where I think I want them and make sure I like how they look. Okay, so I think I like this placement. So now that I know where I want my characters to be, now I can do the last step and glue them down. So what I would recommend doing is taking your glue stick and just putting a little bit of glue on the back of that accordion, on the other side of that accordion spring that you made. And then I'm going to keep it extended and I'm gonna just set it down where I wanted it. And I'm gonna just kind of hold that very bottom part. I don't want to smush it all the way down or else the character may get glued to the sheet of paper if there's a little bit of extra glue on there. So I just want to push down that little tiny part that had the glue on it. And once you feel like it's stuck on there pretty well, then you can kind of position the character and push it down a little bit just so that it kind of creates its shape. And then I'm going to move on to the next one and just repeat the process with all of the characters. Okay, you guys, I have all of my characters glued down, but what I notice is that the bigger characters, so like Beast and Belle, they kind of are looking like they may need a little extra spring to go in the parts that are kind of starting to fall down, um, which makes sense. So what I think I'll do is I'll go back to my scraps and I may just grab, add, make two more little springs just to go maybe under 
um, kind of like the bottom part like where their feet would be just so that it adds a little bit of extra because it kind of is a lot since these ones are a little bit bigger it adds a little bit of extra weight so it may need a little bit of an extra spring so that's what I'm going to do real quick So I made this one just a little bit bigger because I knew that Beast is a little bit bigger. And so the bigger the piece of paper, the more support it will give. So I'm just going to do the exact same process and just kind of push this one down until I feel like it is glued down pretty good. I'm going to do the same thing with Bell. Okay, I think this looks a lot better. So now I am done with my glue. I'm just gonna put the lid on and put it away. I am officially done with my scissors, so I'm gonna put those back away. And this is my final product, you guys. I think it looks pretty cool, and I don't know if you can kind of see, but they are definitely 3D, and they kind of, when you move the paper, they kind of wiggle. So it's kind of cool. I really like this project. I may even do it again with some of the different characters on our Disney classroom and create a different background with different characters. So thank you for joining me, you guys, and I hope you enjoyed the craft. If you did make this craft and you enjoyed it and you like how yours turned out, feel free to post a picture on our Google Classroom or our other social media um, and let us know. We would love to see your creations. Thanks for joining me. Bye.